Okay, in this lecture we want to talk about um, the loss tangent. So we, we, we mentioned it uh, when we talked about the storage and loss moduli in the previous lecture, but we didn't actually define what the loss tangent was. So let me begin by uh, reminding you of the expressions that we developed when we were talking about the storage and loss moduli. Okay, so let's just say that recall, we developed the following expressions for oscillatory loading. Okay, so recall this was oscillatory loading under an applied harmonic strain, and we, we um, obtain from that a harmonic stress, sigma of t, that was equal to y star, which was a complex relaxation modulus, right, times epsilon naught e to the i omega t. Okay, so e naught i to the omega t sorry, epsilon naught e to the i omega t, that was the applied strain. Then we multiply it times this complex um, relaxation modulus to get the stress, okay? So let's go ahead and call that equation one. And let me just remind you of what some of these quantities were, uh, where we defined the complex relaxation modulus, y star, was equal to y prime, which we said was a function of omega, plus the complex component, i, uh, times y double prime, also a function of omega. And we said that this y prime term was the storage modulus, and this y double prime term was the loss modulus. Okay, let's call this equation two. And if you want to go back to the, get the uh, specific integral forms for the storage and loss modulus, I'll just refer you back to the previous lectures. So now what we want to do is we want to propose writing equation one in a new way. So we're going to propose uh, writing equation one uh, as follows. We're going to propose writing it as uh, sigma of t is equal to the magnitude now of the complex modulus, right, uh, times epsilon naught e to the i, but now instead of being just omega t, we're gonna say, how about omega t plus delta, okay? So we're just proposing that, we're gonna see if we can come up with an expression for delta in this way, okay? So we'll go ahead and equate equations one and three, okay? So equating one and three, okay, what happens? Well, we end up with, with something that looks like y star, uh, which is a function of i omega, times epsilon naught e to the i omega t. It's gonna be equal to, now equation three, the magnitude of y star, uh, which is a function of i and omega, E naught, and now I'm going to use uh, my exponential rule to break to break this up, and say that's e to the i omega t times e to the i delta. Okay, so I am I can I can go ahead and cancel out e naught e to the i omega t because it exists on both sides. So I I'm going to just cancel that. Okay, and I'm left with y star of i omega is equal to the magnitude of y star of i omega times e to the i delta, okay? Let's call that equation four. I'm gonna go ahead and expand both sides, okay? So I'm gonna say expanding equation four. Okay, on the left-hand side, I know that that's just uh, y prime, and I'm going to just forego writing that, that it's a function of omega, you know that, so this is y prime plus i y double prime, right, equals, and now the magnitude of y star, well that just must be the square root of y prime squared. Uh, what happens when we square this? Well, we end up with i squared times y double prime squared, i squared being negative one, so this is actually minus y double prime squared. Square root of that, 
And then we can use Euler's formula to write out this e to the i delta term as the cosine of delta plus i times the sine of delta. Okay? Let's go ahead and call that equation 5. So now what do we do? Well, what, we're, what we want to do here is equate the, the real part with the real part and the imaginary part with the imaginary part on the right and left hand sides. Okay, so, so let's just say that we uh, equate, equate, equating the real and imaginary parts of each side. Okay, so when we do that, uh, the real part on the left hand side is just y prime, right? And on the right hand side, what's the real part? Well, that's the square root term. That's a, that is a uh, real quantity. So that's y prime squared minus y double prime squared, square root of that, times the cosine of delta. And then y double prime is equal to, right? So now we want to we'll look at the uh, imaginary component on the left hand side. That's y double prime. And now let's look at the imaginary component on this side. So that's equal to the square root of y prime squared minus y double prime squared times the sine of delta. Okay? And let's collectively call these equations 6. We're almost there. Let's go ahead and divide these two equations. Okay? So dividing these equations. Okay? And what we're going to do is we're going to say what's y double prime divided by y prime, uh, you'll see that the square root terms will just cancel each other out and we're left with sine delta over cosine delta, which is equal to tan delta, okay? Call that equation seven. So the quantity tan delta is called the loss tangent, okay? so. The quantity tan delta is called the loss tangent. Or sometimes you'll see it called the mechanical loss. One thing I'll point out, remember I did not uh, explicitly write that y prime and y double prime were functions of omega, but they are. But because of that, you can look at equation 7 and see that uh, obviously tan delta will be a function of omega. Okay, so right because y prime and y double prime uh, are uh, functions of omega uh, tan delta is a function of omega okay well that was a i guess an interesting exercise um you might be thinking what 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 does that tell me why do i care why do we do that so let me add here's the question that we'll pose uh, what's the physical meaning of delta? Okay, so what is the physical meaning of delta? Okay, so to answer that, uh, we need to observe something about equation um, three. Okay, so let's go ahead and observe uh, that the quantity, remember in equation three we had this quantity that was y star times epsilon naught, right? We had that as almost a coefficient, right? Multiplying some, some uh, exponential uh, e to the i something, right? So observe that this quantity, the magnitude of y star times uh, epsilon naught acts as a stress amplitude, okay? So what does that mean? So sigma of t is equal to that quantity y star, that's the magnitude of y star rather, times epsilon naught times e to the i omega t plus delta, right? That's, that's uh, what we were looking at. And if that acts as a stress amplitude, we could equivalently just say, well, that's the same as some sigma naught e to the i omega t plus delta, right? So let's call that equation eight. Okay, so, so what does that mean? Why, why is that helpful? So let me, let me write it out explicitly. So what this means is that for a strain input, that's oscillatory, right, of epsilon of t is equal to epsilon naught e to the i omega t, 
right? So for that, right, the stress output is going to be given by the following. Sigma of t is equal to sigma naught e to the i times omega t plus delta. So to understand what these these uh, the, how these quantities are related, let's go ahead and plot them. Okay, so uh, we can illustrate this best with a plot. So we're going to illustrate with a plot. Okay, so I've already done this plot for you just so you can kind of see what it looks like. Uh, the strain curve uh, is, and let me also just say these are uh, plotting the real components, okay, of with a plot of the real components of uh, epsilon and sigma, okay? So what do we see here? Well, this blue curve is the strain, right? That's epsilon. And this orange dotted curve is the stress, okay? And what I've plotted here is, is these are uh, normalized by sigma naught and epsilon naught as defined above, right? So as we defined in these equations up here. And then I normalize the time by the period. Uh, if you're interested, right, we can write that the, uh, the period is equal to 2 pi divided by omega, right? That's the period uh, of oscillation, okay? So what do we note here? So we obviously have this, this uh, amplitude, right? So there we have, right, that is sigma naught we have this amplitude here, right, that's epsilon naught. I'm normalized by these quantities, that's why it equals one. Okay, they have the same period, but what do you notice? Well, what you notice is that, let's, there's a distance that's between them, they, they're out of phase, right? So here's our quantity there. That distance is delta, okay? So that's what delta means. So what, what it means is that the, the stress uh, is going to lead the strain by this quantity delta, um, which remember is a function of the frequency. But for a, pick, uh, for a fixed frequency, you'll have a curve that looks like this. The stress leads the strain by a quantity of delta. Okay, so that's, that's what the physical meaning of delta is. Let me double star that because that's something that's important. Okay, so under uh, an applied harmonic strain, okay, the stress leads the strain, and, and what we mean by leading is that it comes earlier in time, right? So it's earlier in time, okay, so it leads the strain by the amount delta. Conversely, what if we had an applied stress and we wanted to look at the strain. So uh, so if we applied a harmonic stress, okay, then the strain would lead the stress by delta, okay? So what does that mean? If we had an input that was now sigma of t is equal to some sigma naught e to the i omega t that our output strain response epsilon of t would be equal to epsilon naught times e to the i times omega t minus delta, okay? So those are those are the cases that we, we would have, and at the very least what I want you to come away with uh, knowing is that this, this uh, loss tangent quantity tells you how far apart, basically, the stress and the strain are um, uh, during the harmonic loading, okay? Uh, we're going to go on in future lectures to show that this is also linked to um, energy loss uh, and hysteresis uh, during loading and unloading.